All right, so in the last episode, we built a functional contact form that captured some data, lets you view it in the control panel, and uh, now we're gonna add some additional layers onto that. So the first thing I wanna cover is basic validation. Now there's a lot of things that you can validate. Uh, you can, uh, you actually have a Laravel 5.1 at the moment, 5.1's entire validation library at your disposal. Um, but most of that stuff is like super niche. I'll just go over a couple of basic options, then you can use the docs to kind of extrapolate. So the first thing we'll do is we'll validate, let's say like all these fields are required and uh, say that email needs to be email. So we'll come over to our form set and each rule here, just write the word validate and then we can say required. Okay, so with just that one change, let's fill out the form and see what happens. All right, so let's give this a clean refresh. Jack, uh, we are validating that name is required. So actually let's leave that empty and we'll just add uh, let's just say like one, two, three, just see what happens. All right, now that error populated. So keep this in mind, there is a page refresh when you're using the form tags. Uh, so if your form is below the fold, you might uh, miss the error. Maybe a chance to use JavaScript validation on top, or um, maybe use a redirect to an error page. But anyway, you can see that this is functional, right? Next, we will validate email is required and is an email address. So if we try this again, we just submit, see what happens. Name is required, email field is required. Okay, so the formatting is just uh, for this error form here, this error data is just a sentence list because I'm doing this. If we wanted to make this a little bit prettier, I'm not gonna go crazy with this, but you'll see the flexibility here. Cool, all right, name fields required, email fields required. So that's great. Uh, phone number, I don't recommend validating phone numbers because <laughs> there are so many possible ways to format one, you will drive yourself crazy. Um, you could maybe do like has an integer so that this is not an email or a phone number, but that's really all I would recommend. Uh, so that's really all that's required here. So if you go to docs.statamic.com slash forms, come down here to, let's see the uh, form set section. Dun -dun 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 -dun. All right, validation rules. So here, validation rules jumps over to Laravel docs, and uh, we'll keep this page up to date, uh, you know, if we use a newer version of Laravel. And these are all the different uh, validation rules that are available to you. So, could be like alpha, must be entirely alphabetic characters. So you could do validate required alpha. Don't do that, because that wouldn't validate. Um, but alphanumeric and Know, boolean date fields digits max min all that stuff literally you just string it along here so if you like max you know 50 min five, zero that's how you pass variables okay so we'll just leave that alone for now and uh yeah i mean that's basically how the validation works you just keep layering that on you find the rule you need you peg it on uh you also have let's see this conditional rule so you can say uh, sometimes, so maybe you have some JavaScript that adds and removes fields, right? So you can ha have a rule that says sometimes, which means if that input is present, then apply validation rules. So that can give you some extra control uh, around how you validate. Okay, so next I'd like to cover what's called a honeypot. Now let's, in order to understand the honeypot, um, Let's take a look at the form inputs. We've got name, phone, email, service, and message. Okay, so let's just take let's let's see how Statamic actually handles this data. We'll we'll fill out a, a sample entry here. Let's close that. Come back, 
And let's add an extra field called nope. All right, I'll pay careful attention. Name, email, phone, service, message. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So this nope one is not gonna be carried through the form submission, even though it's in the form. Okay, so Jack, nope, nope, nope. One, two, three, back at static.com, all right? That's gonna be enough to validate the form. It's gonna submit. Go back to the contact section. We'll load the control panel. And you can see, it's a little more apparent here, that that nope field did not get carried through the form post, okay? So that's that's part of the job that this um, form set is, is managing. These are the explicitly allowed fields. Okay, so there's that, but uh, that's not enough to catch spam, right? So like automated bots that are just firing away at every open form that you can find on the internet are going to eventually hit your form no matter what, even though we're not using WordPress and it's still gonna happen. Uh, so one of the easiest things that you can do is to create a honeypot. And a honeypot is basically a hidden field that a bot would likely fill out because it sees it as a field, but that you hide from your users, okay? So something the user wouldn't fill out by themselves. And if it's filled out, the form submission will not capture. I'll show you this in, uh, in practice. So if we set a uh, honeypot to be that nope field, okay, we've got three form submissions right here. We come back to the site, come down here, Jack, nope, nope, nope. A little email. Okay, looks like it went through, bot is happy but no form submission, okay? So that's how that works. Is if that field is filled out, it's just getting checked in the garbage. So best practices on that is to make it a hidden field type. You don't need a placeholder on that. And I would recommend calling it something kind of generic, like username or like zip code or something, state, something that's not part of that form, right? So if we did that, we came in, set the honeypot to be state. Bot hits that, pre-populates the form, fires off the, the submission, and your system does not accept that. So that is something you should probably do on every form. But for now, we'll just clear that out. Okay. All right, last up, actually, nope, two more things. We're gonna cover uh, metrics. And metrics are in your control panel right here okay so you've got this empty little block here this sad little line says oh there's nobody playing with me all right so you might want to see some aggregate data across your form submissions and uh, there are three main kinds of metrics so we'll come in here we'll start our first one and this will be uh we'll call it total and we'll give it a label total submissions So this is just gonna give you a count of however many submissions have been submitted and not deleted, okay? Then we can add another one and we'll call this, uh, we'll use a sum field. And if you notice, now I did this on purpose, the phone numbers are all integers, so we could reuse this field for demo purposes because the phone number normally have dashes and you can't sum non-integers because that's not how science works. Okay, so we'll set the field to use phone and the label will be <laughs> sum of all phone numbers. And we'll refresh 127 because we have 123 plus 3 plus 1. Okay, and then we also have an average. Which would be. 42.33. You can also set a precision. So if you don't want those decimal points, it'll round. Or if you want lots of decimal points, I mean, you could be very specific. So that's metrics. Uh, I will leave this one because that's relevant. And then last but not least would be uh, emails. And this one I'll actually show you uh, 
we'll use the control panel for this. Why not? Come down here, we'll add uh, an email. And what you basically do, you can have as many emails that are fired off per form submission as you'd like. And this is a successful form submission. So these will not go out uh, if the honeypot catches a submission, right? So say you wanna alert your team, like office at company.com. And that one, that's gonna be from the sender. So to, uh, to format the from, from a sender, you wanna use the variable email, and it needs to be in this string because of the way YAML formatting works. So just remember the syntax. Um, actually, sender from, the from can be from your website, actually. So you can leave that blank. It'll go fall back to your, your um, system settings, or you can have it be like website at company.com. Then over here, the reply to, this is what you want to set to the email. And then, um, contact form submission from example.com. And if you leave this blank, you can you can either map a template where you can use those variables and design a nice template, or if you leave it blank, it'll just automatically send all of the data from that form post to you. Okay, so if you did that, we saved this, come back over to our, uh, to our YAML and we can see how this has been stored in our uh, YAML file. And then whenever this form is submitted, an email will get fired off to this person from your website with the reply all to, uh, to the user. I guess actually that if you're gonna use the control panel, you don't need to explicitly set those quotes. So just keep that in mind. That was a small mistake on my point. And there you go. We've covered validation, honeypot, metrics, and notification emails. Onwards and upwards.